What's up guys, it's your boy Kazaris. Um, I haven't done a sit down video like this in a while, um, but I don't have all the cards for this deck and I still wanted to bring you guys the deck profile. So um, I've been crafting ways to counter the upcoming um, tier format because I don't I don't want to play the deck myself. Um, I find that when my, de my decision trees are too intensive, I tend to misplay a lot. Um, so I just, I like decks that are like more streamlined and I'm able to have more of a clear cut, uh, combo path and ways to like, so they stray a little bit depending on the scenario, but like, I don't, I don't want to be like overwhelmed with decision making. And that's kind of what the tier deck is. Um, so this deck isn't like a direct counter to it, but it plays well into it. Um, and I have all the sprite cards that I enjoy playing the sprite cards. So I just wanted to build a deck, um, that would do well into it. So the idea of this deck is that it cannot the normal standard lines cannot be hit with a bestial or kelbeck um which is really cool um unless they have havenus and are able to trigger kelbeck on their own which is annoying but typically you you're going for a gigantic sprite um immediately um or if you wait to go for it um and like you're playing it you can like play into kelbeck without playing into bestials you can just go for like um any of your water normal summons here and uh, go into Sprite Sprint, send Angler, summon two more Beaver, then make Gigantic. Um, and then you're not putting any Darks in the grave at all for them to bestial. Um, you are playing them yourself still because, like, again, tier, Shizu 2 is going to be the most commonly represented deck. Um, maybe not at locals, but at higher events. Um, so you're playing the three Magna, the three Jewish Worm. Uh, and then the three cash tier of Fenrir. And because you're playing these with D.Va, it gives you some cool extra deck options. You have Scarlight, Red Dragon, Archfiend. So like going second, you hit him with Magnemut. Um, you can summon, you can end phase add either Tiamaton, which is a really cool card, um, or Druus Worm. And then you can go summon D.Va and synchro with Druus Worm, send a card, or you can synchro with Magnemut and then go Scarlight in effect, send everything, which is pretty cool. Um, and then like you'll keep your normal summoned D.Va on the field. You'll synchro with the one that you special summoned. That way Scarlight isn't wiping your level 2, um, so that you can special summon, uh, keep summoning the sprites, which is cool. Uh, you're main decking the Fenrirs. I had Imperms, but they were conflicting a bit with the Bestial, and I think Fenrir is just... Like, it does also conflict, but you can summon it going first. Um, or, like, you can go Magnemut, add, and then add Druus Worm, and, like, just, like, crash them both with your opponent's Bestials or something. Or, like, go to Battle Phase and Force Things first, and then summon Fenrir. Maybe, um, but I think th these are worth playing. Like the the minor confliction is worth it for sure. Um, you also have Wallow, founder of the Drudge Dragons, just because you can go if you resolve Magma, you're adding Druid Worm, and then you're able to make a rank six. And this card is absolutely crazy. All monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each card in your opponent's graveyard. So like against a Shizu, you can just summon like 3,000 attack sprites, and they're just, they're just absurd. It's it's absurd. This card's crazy. Like, that first effect alone is just nuts. But then it's also a double DD Crow, or it's just Reborn slash Toad. Like, you can just take any card out of the graveyard for yourself. Just this card. This card's wild. It's my favorite card of the new set, for sure. Um, but yeah, so the goal of the deck is, like, just simple sprite things, um, but, like, done in a way that plays around the current metagame. Um, the one unfortunate part is that because Orange Light is main decked, if you get hit with it on your normal summon... It kind of hurts. Um, so that I mean, like having Fenrir is definitely good in that case. Um, just has to have like some sort of interruption in the event of you getting hit with Orange Light. You have Starter, and that's why I'm playing Prosperity because like if I do get hit with it, I want to have more ways to see Starter or more ways to see like Swap Frog to discard a Water to special it to keep playing through Orange Light. Um, if I go Swap Frog discard Angler, that's really good because I send a Swap and summon two Beavers. Uh, and then I can make elf. So like swap angler is elf toad just on on its own, which is really cool. Uh, I am playing two anglers because you go beaver summon one angler, and then sprite sprint to send the second angler summon the other two beavers, and then that's all five names. So yeah, so you're always getting like a rescue rabbit effect off the angler, which is really good. Any two level twos or any two monsters, including a level two, is able to send it to grave. This gives you a little bit of teeth for the Ishizu cards. If they hit Angler, you summon two beavers on your first on their first turn, which is cool. A uh, Tiamatan is cool because you can add it off a of Magnemut. Uh, and like if you do the Magnemut in the end phase, you can put it in the zone to make it three in three in a column. Uh, and then search Tiamatan. And then Tiamatan says if three cards, three or more cards are in the same column, 
I can special this from my hand. It doesn't have to be to that column. I just summon it anywhere. And then where I summon it, it nukes everything in that column and then it locks it, that entire column from being used. So I go Magnum it, summon it to a zone to make it a three, add Tiamaton, and then summon it to like, I can summon it to the extra monster zone where my, summon, my opponent summons something, blow it up, and then I lock them because I lock that zone and then I use the other one. So it's kind of cool uh, in that sense. 2K attack too. Like, and it just, Magnum it just lets you just do so much without doing anything really. Because like you you interrupt them by banishing, you search Tiamaton, you summon, you pop something, you go battle phase, you attack with two, and you haven't used anything yet. You still have five other cards at hand. It's just it's just still absurd. Um, or you can just search a Druid's Worm, banish another card, do the same. Link, up, link them both off for dark. Druid's Worm, send a card, dark, take a card. And now you have like a link two and uh, any other monster to make Sprite Sprint without doing anything really. It's just... The deck can do some crazy things, which is cool. I do like Sprite Double Cross um, because you can set up some boards with Dijin Buster and like Sprind, um, where like you negate your opponent's monster, then you take their monster, and then you bounce their monster because you can detach a material from Dijin Buster, uh, like the one you took with Double Cross. Uh, and then like that's just like three interruptions really there, right there. It's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so let's just get into some uh, combos. I am still playing the. Uh, Thunder King Ryo with Mannequin Cat. So this hand's pretty solid. Going second, we have Fenrir, Druus Worm, Bell. Uh, I'm playing Bell over Crow because it's an Earth. It's not a Dark. Um, so going first, we have Fenrir here. We're going to grab Fenrir. Uh, we're going to go Diva. And if they have the Orange Light, we have the Starter, which is good. Diva summon Diva. Um, and now here we can go... We can do a couple things. So... We can go right for Gigantic, um, and then Gigantic can summon Swap because we have Starter. Um, I think I'm going to do that just because I want to lock them out of any anything because I don't want to Sprite Sprint first and then let them be able to Kel back me because the card was sent from Deck to Grave. Um, so I'm going to go Summon Swap, Swap Send Swap, and now I'm going to go Starter. It doesn't matter that I'm locked into twos at this point. I did everything already. I'll take 11, Blue Effect, Add Jet. Um, jet effect. Um, typically blind first. I'll add smashers. Um, playing both of these is like it, you can add interruptions later. Or maybe like if I'm going first I can keep smashers in deck to add it and it'll be usable right away on my third turn. Um, yeah, maybe maybe that makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. So maybe I'll just add double cross just for the sake of having it. Uh, I'm going to link uh, these two, right? Yep. Yeah. So because we went for Sprite Sprint first, um, we can't link it out. Of, we can't get, get it out of the extra monster zone. Or because we went for Gigantic first, we can't get Sprint out of the extra monster zone. Which is a little unfortunate. Uh, it means Elf won't have targeting protection. But I think that's like playing... I think playing around Kelbeck and the Bestials is worth giving up the, the Elf targeted protection. Um, actually, I did this wrong. I have to go... I summon Swap to the wrong zone. Because uh, this is where this points to now. Yep. So I have to go here, and then I'm gonna link off these two. Yeah, for elf. Elf summons swap. And I'm gonna go overlay for toad. I'm still learning. The, I'm still learning the patterns. Uh, this is like different from all the sprite decks I've made. So learning together, but I think this is like a solid starting point. Um, a solid path to go with the deck because uh, right now we have uh, Fenrir Banish at resolution of their monster effect we have uh, a Sprite ba uh, Sprint Bounce if we can like so we go Toad Negate Elf Summon Back Toad Double Cross Attached to Toad Sprint Bounce or like we can Sprint Bounce first and then Toad Tribute itself something like that um, so we have a lot of stuff there that's why I like Double Cross um, because it just makes the Sprint alive if you've used your Xyz monster effect which is pretty neat. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna call it here. Um, so Elf can summon back uh, Blue to search, um, and then we'll, like keeping this level two here is fine. Um, like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven interruptions, um, which is pretty nice. Uh, like you're just you're playing all these hand traps. So you're always gonna have a, t a couple interruptions in hand, and then the the combo you're doing is just adding to that. So we have a negate with toad. We have a take with double cross attaching to the toad. We have sprite sprint detaching from toad to bounce. 
We have Elf summoning back Blue for, or for follow up or to summon back Toad again for another negate. Toad can add back Nimble Beaver to hand for follow up. Um, so we don't really need the blue. It just depends what kind of follow up we want. Like if we want to go blue add Jet to, so that we can get Smashers right away. Um, like that, that, those are the kind of decisions I like making. Like I don't get paralysis from those. Like I can read the situation and do it. It's like going first, if I mill five and I have to sit there and look at my grave, I'm like, uh, okay, so it, it's just, it's a lot to learn. It's a lot to memorize and it's a lot to be able to know to change, uh, depending on the scenario. But like here, like just choosing which interaction to do like that, that, that's pretty straightforward to me. Um, so let's do, uh, whoops, let's do another hand. Didn't mean to hit begin siding. Um, this one is cool. Um, so I go, I can go Fenrir first again. Um, Fenrir is, yeah. I'm glad I put in the Fenrirs instead of the Imperms. I just changed that last minute before the video. This card's crazy though. So <laughs> this card's so absurd. Uh, so I can go Diva again. Uh, this could be Diva or Beaver here. It doesn't matter. A little special Diva. Um, and if I had the orange light there, we could either dig for Nimble Angler or um, Sprite Starter um, just to discard with Swap Frog or just to summon Blue immediately. Um, and then we're going to, if we summon the Swap off the Gigantic, we're going to bounce it and then special it by discarding the Swap. So just because we drew the Swap doesn't really matter that much. Um, but here we are going, to, like, I could just go for Sprite Sprint first if I don't want to play around Kelbeck. Because uh, it, it's, it's, Sometimes it's worth it, depending, like, if, if I know they're not on tier deck, now I'm just going for a Sprint, Send Angler, Summon to Beaver. Because it's slightly better if I do it this way and make Gigantic second. Um, but it is possible to play around it the first way. So, I'm going to go Gigantic Sprite, Effect, Detach. Um, wait, did I add Angler to hand? Yeah, I did. Oops. Uh, detach, I'm going to Summon, in this case... Like, I could summon Swap Frog, bounce, and then special. Um, and then try and dig for, like... Yeah, that's probably better. Uh, I'll summon Swap Frog here. Um, and then... I'm gonna dig for any sprite card, just to get, like, a nicer end board. So, banish one, two... Uh, three... Four... Five... Uh, six, yeah. I'll keep access to IP into, um, Avermax just because Avermax is just crazy. So I'm gonna banish six. And then there's a sprite. So I'll add the jet to hand. Put everything else on the bottom. Uh, you could argue that, like, the math is in my favor enough where I don't have to banish everything from extra deck. I could just banish three and I'll probably hit a sprite still. Um, but just for clarity's sake, I wanted to make sure. Um, I could get starter, get blue, get red, or I could just get double cross. Um, in this case, I think I just want to get double cross. Yeah, I'm just going to get double cross. I'm going to keep the gigantic on the field. I'm going to make elf. I'm going to bounce the swap to hand. I'm going to discard swap to special. Um, swap's also really cool with the bestials. I forgot to mention this because I can like Go summon Bestial Magnumit, banish something, add Duro Swarm, my turn, summon swap, send swap, bounce Magnumit again, banish summon Magnumit, effect, banish summon Duro Swarm, um, and like just get Magnumit search again in the end phase, which is really, really cool. And now we're going to go Elf summon back, swap, overlay for Toad. And set. So now we have Fenrir banish, Toad negate, uh, Sprint double cross take. Like you can, or you can argue that like, Having Sprint in the end, at the end board is cool, but like uh, I'm getting Elf targeted protection here now instead, which is nice. So I have a take, um, a banish with Magnumit, a banish with Fenrir, and negate with Toad. Elf summon back Toad, and Toad is adding back Beaver. Um, so yeah, so lots of interruptions. I have a 3200 attack gigantic that they have to clear also, otherwise that gives me follow up, which is really nice. I'm drawing another Prosperity and probably not going to be able to use that, but so be it. Um, but yeah, like I think Prosperity is definitely solid in this deck again, just to, just to give yourself a little bit more ways to play through Orange Light just by seeing your extenders that don't need a body on field. Um, so that's the deck. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's uh, very cool. Um, still a work in progress, but I think I'm on the right track here. Uh, you're just playing level twos that aren't light or dark. Um, like you still have Jet and Blue that they can use, but like you 
or making it so that they can only do it on their turn, not on your turn, um, and like interrupt you. Like I'm not going elf target blue or anything like that anymore, m most most of the time, um, so that they're not interrupting me there. Uh, that's gonna do it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I will catch you all in the next one. Enjoy your coffees. Um, almost out. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.